The Ministry of Public Security has confirmed that the bodies of all eight Chinese police officers buried under a collapsed building in the Haitian quake have been found. The bodies are expected to be brought home on Tuesday morning by a chartered plane. They were found after around 100 hours of search and rescue work by the joint efforts of the Chinese rescue team, the Chinese peacekeeping force in Haiti and several foreign rescue teams. Of the victims, four were officers of China's peacekeeping force in Haiti and the rest were in a team that was sent by the ministry to Haiti's capital Port-au-Prince for peacekeeping consultations. Meanwhile, Taiwan has rejected the mainland's proposal for the establishment of a joint rescue and search team in Haiti. Chang Taifu, currently Taiwan's acting ambassador in Haiti after Su Mianxiang was injured during the quake, turned down the offer on the grounds that the rescue teams of the two sides have been tasked with different missions. Haiti is one of the 23 countries that recognize Taipei rather than Beijing. Taiwan has boosted its pledge of humanitarian aid to 5 million US dollars, up from the previously announced $200,000, while the mainland will deliver humanitarian aid worth $4.4 million. Diplomats from six powers, including China, met behind closed doors in New York this weekend to discuss how to deal with Iran's nuclear issue amid U.S. efforts to push for more sanctions. But China had called for more diplomatic efforts to achieve a long-term solution to the issue and was the only one of the nations present not to send a top-level official to the talks. Iran said the solution lies in the recognition of Iran's nuclear rights by the group, which consists of the five permanent members of the U.N. Security Council plus Germany. The meeting came after an end-of-the-year deadline to respond to economic and political incentives in exchange for halting its nuclear enrichment activities passed without comment from Iran. Google has denied reports that the company has already closed its China offices, saying it plans to hold talks with the Chinese government over the next few weeks. Meanwhile, Washington has said it is issuing a diplomatic note to China, formally requesting an explanation for cyber attacks on Google. On Saturday, tech rival Yahoo was dragged into the growing row after its Chinese partner, Alibaba Group, slammed its statements supporting Google. Yahoo said it was aligned with Google's position that the violation of internet privacy was deeply disturbing, but an Alibaba Group spokesman said the company did not share this view, which it called reckless given the lack of information. Now, the first booster rocket of the Long March 3 carrier rocket became detached just seven minutes after the launch and fell onto the ground in Guangzhou province. The debris of the booster rocket punched a hole in the ground about 30 feet wide. 2,000 personnel were dispatched to the scene and over 100,000 people were evacuated. Fortunately, no one was hurt in the accident. The rocket was launched on Sunday from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center. The Hong Kong government has secured funding for the 8.6 billion US dollar express rail link with the mainland, but officials also had to deal with the embarrassment of thousands of young protesters laying siege to the Legco building and repeatedly clashing with police. Transport chief Eva Chung and her team of officials were trapped inside for hours as the protesters demanded to speak to her and tried to force their way into the building. At one point, riot police and uniformed officers had to repel the crowds with pepper spray. The project is believed to be the world's costliest rail line per mile and was passed after a 25-hour debate by 31 votes to 21. A tunnel collapse in Guangdong province has killed four, left another four injured, and two others are still missing. The tunnel was part of the Nanning to Guangzhou railway line, which is still under construction. But it's been revealed that the construction team previously told the local government that only four people were injured and that no one had died. It wasn't until 23 hours later that the team told the authorities the truth. According to Chinese regulations, all accidents should be reported within one hour and a written report sent within two hours. Bank of China, which has the most overseas assets of any Chinese lender, said it's ready to apply to set up outlets in Taiwan as part of its effort to extend its global footprint. The bank's statement comes as a cross-strait financial memorandum of understanding takes effect. Beijing and Taiwan signed the memorandum in November, paving the way for the two sides to further open their financial services industries to one another. Mainland banks hoping to set up operations in Taiwan will have to gain the approval of regulators on both sides of the strait. And those are the BON News headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.